Daily Minutes of Sunday, September 6, 2015. This is Peter John of Emergency Radio. Today's broadcast is completely in English. We have news for you from the NRL in the USA, from WIA in Australia, and the RSGB in the UK. Today we don't have a data segment. Two Central Washington repeaters owned and operated by the Lake Chelan Amateur Radio Club have been destroyed by one of the wildfires raging in that state. The co-located machines, one on two meters and one on six meters, were sited on Slide Ridge near Manson, Washington in Chelan County. On August 27th, the First Creek Fire completely leveled the building housing the repeaters. Scorched antennas and support structures are still standing, but are likely beyond repair. The club's Roger Odoritzi, W7CH, said the repeaters have been offline for several days. Ken Rao, K7YR, said the loss included the building, the two repeaters, duplexers, and antennas. The repeaters provided coverage in north-central Washington. Odoritzi said the club's foresight in tending the area around its 440 megahertz FM repeater, located northeast of the city of Chelan, paid off. Although the fire took out the power for three days, the 70-centimeter repeater site was saved because club members had taken care to clear brush and weeds from a wide perimeter around the building housing the machine. Two lifelong radio amateurs have been in the news this week. The Quarter Century Wireless Association has honoured 105-year-old Charlie Hellman, Whiskey Toot Romeo Papa, for his 90 years in amateur radio. Charlie got his licence in 1925 when he was just 15. Two of his siblings also held amateur licences. Robert, now a silent key, was Whiskey to Juliet Alpha November. And Benjamin, 96, is Whiskey to Victor Bravo. Another long-lived radio amateur is Harry Wolf, W6NKT, who is 106 years old, although he's only been licensed since 1936. Cyclist Thomas Anderson, K9DXX, completed his six week ride up the U.S. East Coast on August 29th and is now in the Canadian Maritimes, the 38th country he has visited beginning his Cycling the Globe adventure in Copenhagen five years ago. Anderson has already put more than 26,000 miles on his bicycle, more than the distance around the equator. Along the way, he has been availing himself of ham radio hospitality. On the U.S. leg, which began in Key West, Florida, he often stayed with fellow radio radio amateurs and made many new U.S. friends on his trip. Right after Christmas, he'll complete his round-the-world journey in Africa, along a route he has not yet determined, but, he said, probably somewhere in West Africa. His idea is to eventually head north through Morocco and then to Spain on his way home to Denmark. He said he definitely wants to have some sort of HF radio with him as he travels through Africa. Now for this Rewind story, we thank the ARRL, Southgate Amateur Radio News, and the home webpage you'll find in our text editions. Listen now to this snippet of audio from the moon in 1969. In July of 1969, a Louisvillian by the name of Larry Basinger accomplished an amazing feat. He independently detected signals from the Apollo 11 astronauts on the lunar surface. Fortunately, his accomplishments were recorded and promptly published in the Korea Journal. Larry Basinger was a technician for Louisville's WHAS 840 AM radio. He was also interviewed by the Collins Corporation, who were most impressed that anybody could detect the Apollo signals with home-built equipment. Now, Basinger's wife and daughter watched the Apollo 11 landing on TV while Basinger himself listened via his homebrew equipment. The signal on the home-built gear came through 5-10 seconds earlier than the signal on TV. When asked whether he found anything that NASA had edited out, he said no, absolutely everything was transmitted to the public on TV. In fact, he said, that was kind of disappointing. Part of the idea of this project was to hear the unedited real story. As it turned out, there was nothing edited out. He did not attempt to eavesdrop on any other Apollo missions. After Apollo 11, he moved on to other projects. But his noisy, though they be audio recordings, live on. (laughs) 